in the name of the father and of the son and of the holy spirit amen my dear brother and sister fraternal greetings to you from the carmelite fathers and warm welcome to carmel light reflection on the day's readings it's the 20th of february saturday after ash wednesday and today we remember saints jacinta and francisco marto who are they they are the visionaries of the apparitions of our lady of fatima let's try to know more about them through larissa on the 20th of february we venerate saints jacinta and francisco marto visionaries of the apparitions of our lady of fatima Between May 13th and October 13th, 1917, three Portuguese shepherd children received apparitions of Our Lady at Cova da Iria, near Fatima, a city 110 miles north of Lisbon. At that time, Europe was involved in an extremely bloody war. Portugal itself was in political turmoil, having overthrown its monarchy in 1910. The government disbanded religious organizations soon after. Francisco, aged 11, and Jacinta, aged 10, are the youngest non-martyrs to be canonized in the history of the church. The brother and sister who tended to their family sheep with their cousin, Lucia Santo, in the fields of Fatima, Portugal, witnessed the apparitions of Mary, now commonly known as Our Lady of Fatima. The beautiful lady, more brilliant than the sun, would appear six times to Francisco and Jacinta Marto and their cousin Lucia de Jesus dos Santos, ranging in age from seven to ten years old, inviting these privileged children of the Father, as Saint John Paul II referred to them, to dedicate their young selves to a life of prayer and sacrifice in reparation for the conversion of sinners. You are going to have much to suffer, Our Lady of Fatima said on the occasion of the first apparition, but the grace of God will be your comfort. During the first apparition, which took place on May 13, 1917, Our Lady asked the three children to return to that spot on the 13th of each month for the next six months. She also asked them to learn to read and write and to pray the rosary to obtain peace for the world and the end of the war they were to pray for sinners and for the conversion of russia which had recently overthrown tsar nicholas ii and was soon to fall under communism the children did praying often giving their lunch to beggars and going without food themselves they offered up their daily crosses and even refrained from drinking water on hot days Many people including Lucia's family did not believe the children people laughed ridiculed harassed threatened them and put them in jail for 2 days but nothing could change the truth during the summer on the 13th day of each month the blessed mother mary appeared to the children more and more people started accompanying them to the cova Each time Mary told them to pray the rosary for peace in the world and to sacrifice for sinners. On October 13th, the last day of the apparition, more than 70,000 people were waiting. This time the lady of the rosary asked them to build a chapel on the rocky hillside. The entire crowd saw a remarkable sight. The sun seemed to dance in the sky. It was spinning like a top and shooting off brilliant colors of the rainbow. Suddenly, the sun dropped treacherously close to earth. People dropped to their knees and the sun just as quickly returned to its place in the sky. Less than 2 years later, Francisco died of influenza in his family home. He was buried in the parish cemetery and then reburied in the Fatima Basilica in 1952. Jacinta died of influenza in Lisbon in 1920 offering her suffering for the conversion of sinners 
peace in the world and the Holy Father. She was reburied in the Fatima Basilica in 1951. Their cousin, Lucia dos Santos, became a Carmelite nun and was still living when Jacinta and Francisco were beatified in 2000. She died five years later. Pope Francis canonized the younger children on his visit to Fatima to commemorate the 100th anniversary of the first apparition, which was on May 13, 2017. The Shrine of Our Lady of Fatima is visited by up to 20 million people a year. Placing all our petitions before these two scenes, let us together pray. Most Holy Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, I adore Thee profoundly and I thank Thee for the apparitions of the Most Holy Virgin in Fatima. By the infinite merits of the Sacred Heart of Jesus and through the intercession of the Immaculate Heart of Mary, I implore You, if it should be for Your greater glory and the good of our souls, to glorify in sight of Your Holy Church, Blessed Francisco and Blessed Jacinta, granting us through their intercession the grace which we implore. Amen. My dear brother and sister, let's now pay attention to the Gospel reading taken from Luke chapter 5 verses 27 to 32. At that time, Jesus went out and saw a tax collector named Levi sitting at the tax booth. And he said to him, follow me. And leaving everything, he rose and followed him. And Levi made him a great feast in his house. And there was a large company of tax collectors and others reclining at table with them. And the Pharisees and their scribes grumbled at his disciples, saying, Why do you eat and drink with tax collectors and sinners? And Jesus answered them, Those who are well have no need of a physician, but those who are sick, I have not come to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. My dear brother and sister, have you ever heard of something called a wellness program? The idea is to help develop a lifestyle that will help keep you healthy and make you less vulnerable to illnesses that require a doctor's attention. A good wellness program will include a balanced diet, regular exercise, the right vitamin supplements, and regular physical checkups, all intended to gently treat the whole person. Now, instead of having to aggressively treat a sickness later on. What does this have to do with today's gospel reading? Well, Jesus told the Pharisees and scribes, those who are healthy do not need a physician, but the sick do. Because he consorted with prostitute and other obvious sinners. Levi was himself probably spiritually sick. So it was only natural that Jesus, the divine physician, would reach out to him. 
not all of Jesus' disciples were in such bad shape. Andrew, for instance, was a devoted follower of John the Baptist before he met Jesus. And James and John were probably hard-working fishermen, devoted family men and faithful Jews. Most likely, these men were in decent shape spiritually. But they followed Jesus because they recognized how much his spiritual medicine could help them live even fuller, healthier lives. How healthy are you spiritually? You may not fall into the major sinner category that would apply to someone like Levi, so you may not need radical surgery. But what about those nagging aches and pains caused by anxiety, minor resentments, or small offenses against God's commandments? None of us is perfectly healthy. We all need Jesus' healing touch in one way or another. And that's why we all should follow a spiritual wellness program. My dear brother and sister, what would such a program look like? Instead of vitamins, it would call for a daily regimen of prayer and scripture reading to give us the energy we need to stay focused on the Lord. It would include exercise as well as the exercise of our wills to let in all that is good and reject all that is bad. It would include a steady diet of the body and blood of Christ to keep us filled with Jesus' life and connected with our brothers and sisters in the church. So why not join the Lord's Wellness Center today? You will be glad you did. Lord Jesus, you are the physician of my soul. Renew me in your love so that I may live life to the fullest. Amen. My dear brother and sister, as a response to God's word, we pray the responsorial psalm. Psalm 86, verses 1 to 6. Your response. Teach me, O Lord, your way, so that I may walk in your truth. Teach me, O Lord, your way, so that I may walk in your truth. Turn your ear, O Lord, and answer me. For I am poor and needy. Preserve my soul, for I am faithful. Save the servant who trusts in you, my God. Teach me, O Lord, your way, so that I may walk in your truth. Have mercy on me, O Lord, for I cry to you all the day long. Gladden the soul of your servant. For I lift up my soul to you, O Lord. Teach me, O Lord, your way, so that I may walk in your truth. O Lord, you are good and forgiving, full of mercy to all who call to you. 
Give ear, O Lord, to my prayer, and attend to my voice in supplication. Teach me, O Lord, your way, so that I may walk in your truth. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. My dear brother and sister, today is the World Day of Social Justice. Let's pray for social justice. Come, O Holy Spirit, come. Open us to the wonder, beauty and dignity of the diversity found in each culture, in each face and in each experience we have of the other among us. Come, fill us with generosity as we are challenged to let go and follow others to share with us the goods and beauty of earth. Come, heal the divisions that keep us from seeing the face of Christ in all men, women and children. Come, free us to stand with and for those who must leave their own lands in order to find work, security, and welcome in a new land, one that has enough to share. Come, bring us understanding, inspiration, wisdom, and the courage needed to embrace change and stay on the journey. Come, O Holy Spirit, show us the way. Amen. My dear brother and sister, today being Saturday, a day dedicated to honor our Heavenly Mother, we pray the Novena prayer to Our Lady of Mount Carmel. Novena prayer to Our Lady of Mount Carmel. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Holy Mother of God, we greet you as Queen and Mother of Carmel. You were raised from being a lowly handmaid to the great dignity of the Mother of the Word Incarnate. We dedicate ourselves as an act of filial homage. We glorify the Holy Trinity by honoring you, and in our many needs we have recourse to your protection and your powerful intercession. Jesus, your Son, was so obedient to you on earth, will certainly grant your petitions on our behalf. With this trust and unbounded confidence, we beseech you to hear our prayers and obtain for us of your Divine Son the favors we request in this novena. Having experienced the efficacy of your prayers, we are full of confidence that you will gain for us this favor if it is for the glory of God and for our good. Amen. Let us pray for our petitions. Remember, O most gracious Virgin Mary, that never was it known that anyone who fled to thy protection, implored thy help, and sought thine intercession was left unaided. Inspired with this confidence, I fly unto thee, O Virgin of virgins, my mother. To thee I come, before thee I stand, sinful and sorrowful. O Mother of the Word incarnate, despise not my petitions, but in thy mercy hear and answer me. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, 
as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil amen hail mary full of grace the lord is with you blessed are you among women and blessed is the fruit of your womb jesus holy mary mother of god pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death amen hail mary full of grace the lord is with you blessed are you among women and blessed is the fruit of your womb jesus holy mary mother of god pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death amen hail mary full of grace the lord is with you blessed are you among women and blessed is the fruit of your womb jesus holy mary mother of god pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death amen glory be to the father and to the son and to the holy spirit as it was in the beginning is now and ever shall be world without end amen our lady of mount carmel pray for us thanksgiving prayer holy mother of god and queen of carmel we your children come before you in a spirit of filial devotion and gratitude as mother of our spiritual life you have obtained for us innumerable graces and blessings from our heavenly father who has given to us through you the greatest of all treasures christ our lord we recognize with deep sentiments of thankfulness all the spiritual favors that have come to us through your powerful intercession in particular we thank you for your special protection over those who wear your holy scapular with faith and love and finally we thank you for answering our prayers in our personal needs we implore from you the great grace of final perseverance that we remain faithful to the end to your son our lord jesus christ who is lord forever and ever amen let's pray for god's blessing may the lord jesus be with you to defend you may he be with you to sustain you may he go before you to show you the way may he follow you to guard you from above may he bless you with the father and the holy spirit who lives and reigns forever and ever amen in the name of the father and of the son and of the holy spirit amen we remember today all those who are celebrating their birthdays especially father lawrence de souza from mangalore elson de almeida from mysore ronald fernandes from vijay presently in bahrain greta de souza from pangla udupi milagrin nesrit from halial karwar wish you all a happy birthday God bless you. Mothes Santan and Josephine Sous from Kanpur, Belgaum are celebrating their wedding anniversary today. We congratulate them and we pray God's choices blessings on them. My dear friends, that's all for today. Have a great weekend. See you tomorrow. Bye bye